So we're going to do part two of IPT. And recapping, we know that cancer cells have many more insulin receptor sites and love glucose. And bringing that home, actually, Dr. Holm at the uh, University of Heidelberg, uh, 1996, showed that cancer cells have 30 times the avidity for glucose and produce 42 times the amount of lactic acid. So we use IPT and we give insulin first to open up the cancer cells because again cancer cells have many more times the amount of insulin receptors then we give the selected chemo based on chemo sensitivity testing if possible and again a chemo sensitivity test is just like a urine culture and sensitivity you get the tumor cells and see what kills them the best and that's what you use instead of guessing and one patient said chemosensitivity is like hunting for treasure with a map whereas conventional they hunt for treasure without a map so it's a good way of looking at it a good analogy so chemosensitivity is coming into mainstream medicine and I feel that within three years it's going to be the standard of care so Chemosensitivity testing, we select the chemotherapeutic agents, we do baseline glucose level, and then we give the selected chemo uh, after we give the insulin, and then we have you eat a sugary fruit, such as banana, pineapple, uh, watermelon, and such. Uh, and that helps drive the chemo into the cancer cell. We do lots of other things to help enhance uh, the chemotherapy, such as DMSO. DMSO drives things into the body. It's used in mainstream medicine, especially for physical therapy, to get things into joints, into tendons and ligaments. So DMSO is given with the initial insulin and while you're getting the chemo drip. Uh, we also utilize high-dose vitamin C which has been shown by Mount Sinai School of Medicine to enhance certain chemotherapeutic agents. About three or four months ago, they published this. It was with Pacotaxel, which is utilized for several cancers, such as pancreatic cancer and lung cancer and other cancers. So vitamin C is back in the main line as being effective. As we know, Linus Pauling in the 70s was the one that push vitamin C and show that it can be beneficial for cancer. However, it is not the only and sole answer, and Linus Pauling said that. He said it should be used in adjunct with chemotherapy. It should not be used solely, and I think it's a mistake just to use vitamin C solely. Now, how does vitamin C actually work? In high dose, it creates free radicals, hydrogen peroxide. Uh, free radicals kill cancer cells because they do cancer cells don't have catalase. Catalase is an enzyme that eats up the free radical hydrogen peroxide. So that's the main mechanism of action of vitamin C. And the free radical combines with iron. So what I've been doing is giving a touch of iron. When your sugar drops, we give the vitamin C a push, high dose vitamin C, with some iron. So now that selectively goes into the cancer cells, selectively creates more free radicals. And I think it's very exciting that we're augmenting and improving actually vitamin C delivery and mechanism of action. We do not give antioxidants with the vitamin C because that would be contraindicated. And finally, my peers have recognized that and are not utilizing glutathione with vitamin C because that counters it, it, glutathione is an antioxidant, so you're therefore working against the vitamin C. So that was a mistake. So do not take antioxidants when you're getting high-dose vitamin C. Uh, there are many other things that we do with IPT to enhance it. I am a board-certified oncologist hematologist, so I have no problem giving higher doses. Mainstream chemotherapists, oncologists will say that small dose chemotherapy is not good because you give a chance for the cancer cells to develop mechanisms of resistance 
So in other words, the cancer cells will outsmart the chemo. So their whole main thrust is kill them quick, brutalize the cancer in the beginning, high dose, so that they don't have a chance to mutate and form resistance. There's a protein called multi-drug resistant protein that they secrete after a while. Having that in mind, I do sometimes front load the chemo. I have the patient make the decision. We can give them a higher dose in the beginning to get the benefit that the conventional oncologist would say is the way to go. That is, kill the cancer cells quickly so they can't mutate. Now, metronomic chemo is now in mainstream, which is basically low-dose fractionated chemo. It's used with lymphomas, with rituxan, it's used with other cancers and was recently discussed, well, in 2006, uh, the uh, National Cancer Institute coined it metronomic chemo once again, meaning low-dose fractionated. And in essence, that's what IPT is, low-dose fractionated chemo. So it is not a absurd way to give chemo. It's accepted. And at the end of the month, when you think about it, even if you were only given 10% chemo, if you got it twice a week, that would be 80%. So that's simple math. But however, people that scrutinize IPT will just say it's too low, you can't do anything. But again, do the math, and it's almost 100%, especially if you do it the way I do it, front-loading, giving a higher dose in the beginning, it adds up to even more than 100%. And I'm very happy with the results that we've been getting uh, with metastatic pancreatic cancer, uh, metastatic anal cancer, in remission, very exciting. And I think that uh, if you have a cancer without answer, IPT might be a good choice. If you have a cancer that straight medicine, such as a lymphoma or Hodgkin's disease, straight protocol, I think, is the way to go. Yes, you should augment it and do other things in and around it to blunt the side effects and or help the chemo work even better. You do have to know what you're doing because you can interfere with the chemo, which you don't want to do, or the radiation. So you need to go to a practitioner that understands both sides of the coin. If you have any questions, any concerns or topics you would like us to discuss, please call us at 631-361-6160. Again, 631-361-6160. Thank you.